Welcome to 11.7. And if you would put an A <coughs> on there, I should have done that. It was my fault. So 11.7A, we're looking at volumes of pyramids and cones. Uh, last section, we looked at volumes of prisms and cylinders. So let's kind of back up a little bit here. Look at your 11.5 notes, if you would. And let's remind ourselves of the differences between prisms and cylinders and pyramids and cones. So you will remember that prisms and cylinders uh, both have two bases. Those bases have to be congruent and parallel. So here are two faces that are congruent and parallel. So we call these the bases. Here are two faces. Actually, it's not a face, is it? Because a face has to be bounded by polygons. But anyway, here's two surfaces that are congruent and parallel. And so those are your two bases. So that's prism and cylinder in contrast to pyramid and cone. Pyramid and cone only have one base. And notice that the other side uh, of the figure uh, is the apex, where all the other edges come to one point uh, to your apex there. And notice that all these sides around a pyramid are triangular sides. These faces are triangles. In contrast to the prism, the faces are rectangles. Okay, so prism and cylinders have two bases, and pyramids and cones only have one base. So when we did the volume of prisms and cylinders, we had this very simple formula. Volume equals capital base times the height. Capital base refers to the area of the base. And so we just took the area of this one base <coughs> and then multiplied it, or found the area of this base, and then multiplied it times the height. And then same thing for a cylinder just took the area of the base and multiply it times the height. The only diff difference here was that the in a prism, in this particular prism, the base is a rectangular shape. So we took, we and actually I said base times width. Let's not do that. Can you go back to your 11.6 notes and change that into a, an H for height? Normally they say length times width or base times height. I convoluted the two. And so I uh, have it as base times height. And so this is the height of this capital B base here. And then this is <coughs> the height of your uh, prism. In fact, I should probably get my marker. Can I do that? Yep. And so what I'm doing is labeling all of the heights of the solids as uh, orange to make it a little bit uh, clear of what we're trying to, to distinguish uh, other heights. So notice that you do have uh, two different heights. Here's the height of the rectangular area, and then here is the height of the prism. Whereas in the cylinder, <coughs> it's the same formula, capital base times the height, but the area of the base is pi r squared, because this guy is a circle. And as you remember, the area of a circle is pi r squared. So I should also mark these, what should I do here? Let's mark these h's as orange. Is that right? Yeah. Got to be careful not to do too many things while I'm doing a video, because I'm rushing. And I make mistakes all the time. OK, so that was with 11.6, with prisms and cylinders. Rather simple formula. The only difference is the shape of the base. So sometimes the shape of the base is a rectangle, or it could be a triangle, or it could be a circle. Now let's move into 11.7a, and we're looking at the volumes of pyramids and cones. Remember, pyramids and cones only have one base. So for example, here is a pyramid, and this looks like a rectangular. Actually, looks like a square, doesn't it? But uh, let's call it a rectangle, rectangular uh, pyramid because the base is the, the shape of a rectangle. So this capital base here 
uh, will be base times height. That's the base and height of the area of this rectangle. But notice that the uh, formula does change. It's not simply uh, base times uh, height like it was with your uh, prism and cylinder. Now it's one third, one third. So whenever you have a pyramid, it's one third the volume of if it would be a prism. And then same principle for a cone, it's one third of what the volume would be if it was a cylinder. <clears throat> and besides that, it's all the same. The rest of it's all the same. So really just tag on this one third in front of it and the rest is the exact same as if you were finding the volume of a prism uh, or the volume of a, a cylinder. The only thing that you're doing is you only want one third of what it would be when you are calculating the area or the volume of a pyramid and a cone. Okay, I think that explains it. Oh, let me also emphasize with the the height here. Uh, notice it was it will always be your perpendicular height. This uh, that we call an altitude. The segment here is called an altitude. The length of the altitude is called the height. And uh, this altitude segment here is always perpendicular to the base. Perpendicular to the base. Same as this one over here. So uh, think of it as forming an H. You can see an H here. So when you see height, think of, okay, that's a perpendicular from the base to the, X, the apex in this uh, particular case. Let me also uh, remind you, I'll tell you what, it'll come up in, in just a minute, so I don't need to do that. <clears throat> okay, let me give you some examples. Here is, uh, what is this thing? Well, uh, this is a triangle down at the bottom, I see that, and all the other edges come to one particular point, and all the sides around that particular point are triangles. And so therefore this is a triangular uh, pyramid, triangular pyramid. And this is your apex up on top. And so our formula for, so let me make sure to uh, um, focus this guy. So our formula for this is uh, one third capital base times the height. And this is the height of the solid the height of your pyramid. And so uh, the capital base uh, here, the shape of our base is a triangle like I said and the equation for, so let's just do this, the equation for the area of a triangle is one half lowercase base times the height and that is the height of your triangle. They're telling us that this is a right triangle so let's call this the base, this four as the base and remember H it's always going to your height is always going to be the perpendicular um, perpendicular to the base and so it's the same in this case it's also perpendicular here so therefore we can take this 6 as your height so that's why they plug in 1 half and then uh, 4 and times 6 and then you have the height of your pyramid so again recognize that there's two different heights here one is the height of the triangle and one the other one is the height of let's say one is the height of your two-dimensional triangle the other one is the height of your three-dimensional solid and the height of your three-dimensional solid is nine and notice that this height also has to be perpendicular in this case it's perpendicular to this uh, um, plane uh, that the containing the base Okay, capital base. <laughs> okay, so you plug all that stuff in and you get 36. And notice that whenever you're talking volume, it's going to be cubed. So it's, uh, in this case, meters cubed. Remember when we were talking about area? It was squared. And when circumference and perimeter, it's just the length. But with volume, it is cubed to the third power. So now, look at this guy. This guy looks like a cone, but it's a squished off to the side. So remember that Cavalieri's principle?
from 11.6, Cavalieri's principle told us that you can have a, a right prism, and then if you squish it off to the side, it will keep the same volume on it as long as the height stays the same. So in order to find the volume of a prism that's not a right prism, right means it's at a right angle uh, here, but instead it's squished off to the side, it's a leaning tower of Pisa, then you do not use this length here of this edge, make sure you use the perpendicular height of the entire uh, solid. So like we said over here, if we wanted to find the uh, volume of this uh, figure, uh, it'd be capital base times the height, and this is the height of your prism, and so it has to be your perpendicular height. And notice that that's different than the length of this edge here. So same principle applies uh, over here when we're looking at the, a cone, and uh, we want a perpendicular uh, height. And they really don't tell us, do they? They should tell us that this is perpendicular uh, to the the plane containing the base, capital base uh, here. But um, let's assume that it is. So therefore, our formula, because this is a either a, a uh, pyramid or a cone, it always uses this formula. Uh, the volume equals uh, one third capital base times the height of the solid. And what is the shape of our capital base uh, here? Uh, it is a circle. So we use the equation for the area of a circle, pi r squared. And our radius is, what is that, 2.2? Yep, 2.2. Plug that in for uh, radius. And the height of our uh, cone, even though it's leaning over to the side, that's fine. As long as we have the perpendicular height, uh, which is uh, 4.5. And we can solve it in terms of pi. So this is the answer in terms of pi, 7.26 pi. You could even say pi centimeters cubed. That's fine, that's a good number. In fact, that's a perfect number. Or you could round it and multiply it times, or by, multiplying 7.26 times uh, 3.14 and whatever other digits follow that. And then round it to the nearest hundredth and you would get this deformed number and notice that it's approximately that number. Okay, so you are ready now to be able to do your two problems down here. Uh, number one, so this looks to me like it is a, a square pyramid because we have tick marks uh, here. And so that tells us that all four of these sides are congruent. Or at least, no, no, they also tell us here that uh, this is a right angle. I was going to say at least it's a rhombus. But they tell us this is a right angle, so therefore all the other angles have to be right angles. So this is a uh, square. The, the capital base on the bottom here is a, is a square. And it comes to a pyramid. This is your apex up here. So we use our formula. Volume equals one-third capital base times the height of the solid. And what is the shape of your uh, base here? Uh, it is a square. So you can put parentheses around that if you want to. So the capital base turns into little base <laughs> times the height. And so this is the base of your two-dimensional square and also the height of your two-dimensional square. Uh, so the height here is five. So I will let you tell me uh, what the length of the base is here. You should be able to figure that out. And then times h, and this is the height of the three-dimensional solid. So make sure that you get the correct height. So again, notice that there's two different heights. It can be confusing. So make sure you know whether you're talking about the height of the two-dimensional capital base or are you talking about the height of the three-dimensional uh, solid. And plug in your numbers and solve that. Now looking at uh, question number two, this, uh, this guy is a right cone, so this is a right angle uh, here. And they do tell us what the radius is, the radius of 5. But they tell us what the length of this edge is here, uh, this 8 meters. I do know that my equation for volume 
is one third capital base times the height of the solid. So capital base, that uh, the shape of my base uh, is a circle. So that's pi r squared. And I can plug in my five for the radius in here for the r. But what is the height? What is the height of this solid? Is the height eight? And the answer is no, that's not the height. You want this length over here. So we need to figure out what this height is. Huh, how do I do that? Well, I do know, hey, this is a right triangle here. And this length, this leg is five. Across from your right angle is your hypotenuse. So this guy is eight. So how do I find the length of this uh, third side? Well, you remember the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And your hypotenuse is always the one that goes in for the C. So you plug in the 8 for the C, <clears throat> and then plug in the 5 for the A. And then your B is going to be the height of the solid. So then you have an equation that you can solve for H. And then once you so find the height of the solid, then take that height and plug it in here for your formula for the volume of that solid. Okay, hopefully that's enough to hold in your hand and getting you prepared and lined up for it. You can do the rest on your own. So please try that. Don't just copy this down and then hand it to me and say, Mr. Levitz, here you go. I know what I wrote. I don't need to know which, what I copied, what I, what I wrote. Just don't copy it. Make sure you think. Okay, so listen carefully. Go back and listen to my explanation of these problems again if you need to, to uh, understand how to do it. Let's look at another example in the book here. And here is a cone. Okay, so we know that our equation is uh, one third capital base times the height. We got that. And we know that the shape of our base is a, uh, what the hell is a square? Is a circle. And we know that the area, the equation for the area of a circle is pi r squared. So we got that part, that's okay. But, and, and they do give me, no they don't. You man, not give me the radius. How am I supposed to know about the radius? Huh, they do give me the height, okay, that's the perpendicular height of the solid. So I know that the height is 16, I can plug that in. But how do I find the radius? How do I find the, the length of this radius? Well if I take this, this diagram here, and then take this triangle, and bring it out so it's easier to be able to see. Okay, so my height is 16. I need to know what the radius is, and they do tell me that this angle over here is 65 degrees. Hey, can I use the Pythagorean theorem? No, I can't, because I need two sides to find the third using the Pythagorean theorem. But I can use trig. Because I know this angle, and this is a right triangle, I can use trig. So, in reference to this angle, in reference to this angle, over here, this side is the opposite. Hey, what I should have done first, right, is here's my right angle. So across from the right angle, that's your hypotenuse. And in reference to this angle, 65, this side here is your adjacent, right? Okay, so what's happening? I have my opposite, and I want the adjacent. So what trig function uses opposite and adjacent? And hopefully you remember that it is tangent. So the tangent of 65 degrees equals opposite over adjacent. In this case, opposite is 16, and the adjacent is our radius. So now I have this equation where I can solve this equation for the radius. Remember how I do that? Clear my denominator, multiply both sides by your radius. This will cancel out. And then to um, get radius by itself, uh, divide both sides by the tangent of 65. So the radius is equal to 16 divided by the tangent of 65. And remember, don't